I'm Lisa Stone. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Parenting Aces. Welcome to the Parenting Aces podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Stone. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could go to college and get a degree in tennis? Well, thanks to the new professional tennis management curriculum, you can do just that. This PTM course is available at more and more colleges across the U.S. each year. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking with Jorge Capistani, a coach from Michigan who is the head men's and women's tennis coach at Hope College. College and is also the force behind bringing a PTM program to that school. Jorge has been working very diligently over the past several months on the curriculum for the program, recruiting players, and setting up a network of job opportunities for those players once they graduate from Hope. And I'm just so thrilled to have him on the podcast again to talk about this latest development in tennis education and this latest opportunity for players who want to go on to pursue a career in the tennis world, though aren't necessarily interested in playing tennis to make their career. So without further ado, here's Jorge Capistani talking about the new professional tennis management program. Jorge Capistani, thank you so much for doing the podcast again. It's been a while. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you today. Well, I'm excited to hear more about this professional tennis management program that you've got going on at Hope College. And so I'm going to just jump right in and let you tell us a little bit about what professional tennis management means. Um, you know, how does a, a student get involved in a program like this? And you're running the program at Hope, but there are programs at other universities around the country. So I'm going to be quiet now and let you tell us all about it. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks again for letting me uh, come on and share a little bit about PTM. Uh, Professional Tennis Management Programs, also known as PTM programs, um, are growing. And the the first one that ever was um, put in place actually was here in Michigan. I, I live in Holland, Michigan, in Ferris State University. I uh, started one literally like 30 years ago. It was the only one. And for many years, there was only, you know, a few of these. Um, there was one in Tyler that was a two-year degree, Tyler uh, in Texas, that is. And Methodist in uh, North Carolina, they have a four-year degree. But the idea is, um, think of it as a tennis degree, basically. So you'll go to college and you, and almost, well, really in all the PTM programs, the actual degree that you get is an already existing college degree. It's not per se a tennis degree. Um, So, for example, uh, it could be in business or it could be in hospitality. Here at Hope College, we decided to make the actual degree that's attached to the PTM program uh, a sports science degree. So it's in specifically it's exercise science. So each college that has a PTM program can kind of decide what their major is going to be. And then the, the tennis portion uh, is kind of, you can think of it as a minor, Some and there's different names for it. Some colleges will call it a minor. Others will call it a concentration. Others a certificate. But it's basically a whole other piece to it that's very uh, tennis-specific. And um, the reason I'm excited about running the one here at Hope is because at Hope, where I work, uh, I'm the manager of the Duet Tennis Center, which is fully owned by Hope. Plus, we have this uniqueness that, Besides servicing uh, the college here at Hope, and obviously with the home courts uh, for the Hope varsity teams and the club team and stuff, but we also have actual members. We have like 500 members from our town here in Holland, Michigan. So what that does is it gives us an actual living laboratory. We, we're already doing women's teams and men's teams and leagues and little kids' lessons and net generation programs and private lessons and a really large junior program and summer academy camp. So um, that was kind of what made it a no-brainer for us here at Hope because we already have everything in place, not only facility-wise, but also program-wise. So the kids that come to our PTM program aren't going to actually be just teaching each other. They're going to be getting their hands dirty and, and getting actual experience with real-life people. 
So who is a candidate for a professional tennis management program? Do you have to be a high-level tennis player? No, and that's always the question that everybody assumes. And uh, so basically, here's a little bit of information for you. At the end of the four years, the player should be a 4.0 player. So that would be considered a high, intermediate, low, advanced player. If you translate that to most high school teams, most high school teams, not all, but their singles players are already playing at the 4-0 level, and a 4-0 level um, is the minimum that the PTR and the USPTA require for you to be able to test. So one interesting stat, that, and this is a big misnomer, so I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, is, well, a lot of people that might think about this, high school uh, players, uh, junior tournament players, well, they look at their own coaches, and in some cases those coaches have a really strong playing background. So they erroneously assume, well, I have to be like really an amazing player. But you really don't. Some of the best coaches in the whole world haven't been strong players. Uh, Nick Boletieri, you can think of as probably the prime example, developed you know tons of number one players in the world, and he himself was never a strong player. So um, the other stat that most people don't understand is that 70% of the PTM students historically did not even play on their college team. Uh, you can play on the college team and be on the, be a PTM program, uh, but you don't have to be. So that's the one thing I want to make sure people understand is um, it, it's really not a program for someone that likes tennis and is a total beginner. It's going to take way too much time for that person to get his playing skills up. But while playing skills are important, you know, teaching skills are, are way more important. I I had my own career path, which was kind of lucky for me. I, when I was graduated from college, my college doubles player, who was two years older for me, he was my doubles partner, he offered me right out of college a director of tennis job, which he had actually had, but he got promoted to be the manager. And then I, at age 22, I hopped in there as a director of tennis. I really didn't know what I was doing. I had no, you know, I just basically was a tennis player. So it was a rough road in the beginning, learning all the business side and learning how to actually, you know, talk with players, you know, I was kind of not that much older than the actual player. So these programs are going to be amazing because it will just give people an incredible head start. Uh, The ability, you know, they will already know how to string, they'll know how to work front desk, they'll know how to work clay courts, they'll have experience with little kids, with uh, men's teams, women's teams are going to just be miles ahead of where I was, for example, because there was nothing like that for me back then. Well, let's talk about some of the actual qualifications that students will gain by going through this program. You mentioned stringing, you mentioned clay courts, managing a front desk, et cetera. Uh, But, you know, being uh, in the tennis profession as a coach or as a tennis director or a club manager, there's so many facets to that job that don't involve hitting fuzzy yellow balls, right? (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so talk about some of the specific skills in addition to the ones you already mentioned that would give a, a college student a reason to pursue this secondary degree or certificate or minor or whatever that their university sure. happens to call it. Um, you know, why would they need to go through this as opposed to doing what you did and just hopping into a job after college and hopefully having a good mentor to help them out? Sure. Well, actually, that's a great question because um, a little bit about the tennis industry, I'll give you a 30,000 foot view and then how things are changing. So um, the tennis industry in the in the United States alone, just the U.S., is $5.57 billion. It's, it's a bigger industry that most people than most people understand. Um, the problem that we've had is, is that up until now, the United States is very unique in that the association or the federation, in our case, the USTA, they do not um, certify the coaches. Uh, and we're very unique that way. I think we might literally be the only country where that doesn't happen. The way it happens in the U.S. is that there's two organizations that do that. They, they're kind of competitors. One is the PTR, which stands for Professional Tennis Registry, and the other one is the USPTA, which stands for United States Professional Tennis Association. So historically, um, what can happen here in the U.S., and this does happen, is let's say, you know, someone decides maybe they're a, a club player and they 
play four O level and they're halfway decent and they love tennis, they can become a certified coach literally in, in a weekend. So the training and the standards to kind of enter has been dismally low um, compared to what other countries have to do, especially. So what that means is I can go to a, a weekend and do an eight-hour workshop on Saturday and then Sunday take a four-hour test and then I'm certified. Uh, the other problem that's happening in our country is that unlike some other countries, you can be a tennis teacher without having any license or certification. It's not necessary legally. So literally, um, a beginner can start teaching tennis down at the high school and just the people pay him, then he's fine to go. Um, as compared to, like, if I, I'm a tennis coach, right? So if I decided that I wanted to sell houses and just started trying to be a realtor, I can't do that. I have to be licensed to be a realtor. So that's kind of the realities um, of what happens. But here's kind of, you know, the next thing that's kind of coming down the pipe. So the USTA, our governing body, has kind of looked at the coaching landscape and they've kind of thought, well, you know, unfortunately, the two, the USPTA and the PTR, in their opinion, hasn't really been raising the standards. They've kind of been lowering them because they're kind of competing for members. Uh, and they've been trying to get the two associations to join. And as of now, that's not really happening. But um, so what they do is, is just they're right because through they're the governing body is they can say, listen, we're going to elevate coaching. And what we're going to do is set the new standards for coaching. And now you two associations, PTR and USPTA, actually have to submit to see if we will accredit you. So I know just last week the USPTA uh, heard back that they have been provisionally accredited, and I know the PCR is working on submitting their stuff. So that's kind of what's happening. But the long story short is the days of going to a little weekend workshop are going to go away in 2019. You can't do that any longer. So there's going to be two pathways. Um, if you are a high school age kid or a student in college, you could become a tennis professional by being, um, if you want to be certified, you're still going to have the reality that anybody could do it. But if you want to be certified, which I think most clubs want certified coaches, uh, you're going to have to either be a PTM student or if the, say you're 26 or 28 or 38 or whatever, uh, if you want to start in the industry, you don't have to go back to college, but you'll have to do an apprenticeship. So PTM programs or apprenticeship is going to be basically the the new norm starting in 2019. So, and how, uh, the how will those apprenticeships yeah. work? That's so interesting. That you're, this is the first I'm hearing of that, and I'm I'm thrilled about that. I have to say. <laughs> yeah. So what's going to happen is, and it's all, you know, this is all literally developing as we speak. Uh, the USTA formed a new division, if you will, called USTAU, uh, and their mandate is to kind of elevate the coaching level and educate coaches and um, put out programs. So they're also trying to get more and more PTM programs. You know, they wanted to go from 30 or from three PTM programs to like 33 PTM programs. Currently uh, there's eight and ours is one of the newer ones. We're starting this coming fall in 2018, but they're not done. They want to have literally 30 or more PTM programs. And by the way, the reason they want that is because if you're a tennis professional at a club, you know that there's a huge demand. There's in my inbox right now, Lisa, you know, we, we put out a press release about stuff, you know, with our new PTM program college at hope. And I have in my inbox seven emails. I'm, I'm filing them in a little folder that says PTM of people already wanting to know if I have some summer internships that they can use, uh, interns they can use. And the reality is I mean, we wouldn't even start yet. I don't have any students on, in the program. So they all start this fall. So this is how much interest there is. In my inbox, I keep a little email of, of coaches and friends that are in the industry that email me and say, hey, um, I'm looking for a pro. You know, I'm running six clubs now. I'm here in, you know, whatever state and, you know, I'm not getting enough pros. So there's a huge demand. And one of the big pluses of PTM, this is a huge selling point, is that historically all PTM students across the in the past have had a 100% job placement rate. Wow. So think about that. That's um, huge. <laughs> any person, yeah, any person that's graduated with a PTM program and wanted to have a tennis job, because some don't by the end, maybe they want to do a different career. Um, but literally 100% of them have had jobs. 
Uh, and I, I can already see that's going to happen with us because I got people trying to hire people before I even get students. Um, so that's the good thing. And the other real interesting part that people should know is that the starting salary is about 60000 which is amazing for most people when you tell them you can teach tennis, you have a, probably 100% job placement rate, you can start at an average starting rate of 60000 they, They're like, they don't even believe it. Now, obviously, that 60000 depends a lot on where you live. You know, if you live in Holland, Michigan, a little town in western Michigan where I live, you're probably not going to make that. But if you live in a bigger town, you definitely can. Um, but basically, we have a problem in, in our country, which is not nearly enough um, coaches. There's 60, um, there's about 56 million people that try uh, tennis every every year, and about 60% of them quit. You know, because if you, you know, imagine a beginner, and this is what happens to our poor sport. So the Miami Open was just on last week, right? Right. And here in Michigan, it's starting to spring coming. People are kind of desperate to get outside. They watch a little TV, and they see this, these cool guys playing. And the husband turns to his wife. He says, you know, honey, back when I was in high school, I was quite the player. She goes, yeah, I know you were. You know, we should play again. Yeah, we should. So they grab a couple of rackets, maybe wrestle a ball away from a dog, and they march down to the local tennis high school where it's all free here. And they get 80 feet away from each other, and they start to play, and it doesn't go that well. You know, it's a hard sport to learn in the beginning if you don't have some coaching assistance. And if you have the right type of coach, it can be a way easy sport to learn. So <laughs> that's kind of what the USDA knows. We need better coaches. We need more coaches so that people's first experience can be successful so they don't kind of quit. Uh, right. And that plays out all over the country. People going, beginners, without any coaching, they get 80 feet away because that's what they saw on TV, and they try to rally. And I, I can promise you, if you have anybody in your family, extended family that doesn't play, and you take them to the tennis court, put them 80 feet away, give them the ball, and say, here, go have fun, it's not that much fun. <laughs> Right. It's like me it's on a, a golf ball course. Chasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so that's kind of what's happening. They're really going to be the PTM program and the apprentice program. So specifically to answer your question, uh, the apprentice program, I think, is still under development. But basically what's going to happen is a new person will have to come now in the, in the USTA and the PTR, PTA, I'm assuming, will have these designated um, apprentices or, you know, kind of mentors and you won't be able to just do it with anybody. You can't just come to work with me and, and have me say, yeah, he's good enough. You're going to have to do all these different things. You're going to have to know about nutrition and racket stringing and sports science. And they're developing all kinds of online programs uh, for PTM programs and apprentices to use. That's part of what USTAU does. They're a new division, and they're based out of Lake Nona. And interestingly, the, the leader of USTAU, Scott Schultz, was actually the first person that invented the PTM program 30 years ago at Ferris. He was the first ever PTM program. Wow. So he obviously he has a lot of knowledge about that. He can speak to colleges and stuff. So I think more and more colleges are interested, particularly because of the job placement rate. Uh, there's a lot of colleges nowadays under pressure. You know, kids are graduating with a lot of debt and they're not getting jobs. Um, so when you can add a program that has like a nearly 100% literally 100% placement rate uh, and a pretty good starting salary. It's a it's a win for the college as well as the players. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I'm excited to do it. The part, you know, at Hope College, we decided to do it with the kinesiology degree, exercise science. So all the sports science part, we're going to have way more than what even the USDA requires. But then the fun part for me is that you know, I, I go around and I coach a lot. I, I, I speak at conventions, and I'm already kind of doing coaching of coaches. So now I get to coach here, uh, the future coaches, which is kind of cool. So I have a blank slate of what that curriculum is going to work like. So I, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. I'm developing all these cool ideas of what, you know, we want the tennis specific. Obviously, we're going to have the obvious ones. They're going to learn how to do group lessons. They're going to learn how to feed properly, how to do world-class private lessons, how to all the basic things, but I'm really pumped about, you know, having kids on campus and then doing a, an actual, you know, internship where they're literally working at the club as part right. of their degree. So when they get the PTM 
Is it called a degree at Hope, or will it be called something else? Uh, it's called a concentration at Hope. Concentration. Yeah. So what will happen like- is um, at the end of – during their time here, um, at the very end, if usually this happens in their junior year or their senior year, we're still going to have the players get certified by the U.S. PTA and the PTR. Now, I guess the PTR is still waiting to get accredited, but they haven't turned in their, their info yet. But with the assumption that they will get all the stuff that, and get accredited by the, the USTA, the governing body, then probably what I'm going to do is have our players be certified with both the PTR and the USPTA because I want our kids coming out and having the best chance to get the best job. So, um, and depending maybe you on can, where you go in the country. Yeah, but well, I, sorry. I was going to say, once you're certified with these organizations, that gives you membership in the organization. And I know, you know, there are dues associated with that and perks associated with that. Um, will that be an extra cost to the PTM students or will that be built into their tuition? How will that work? Yeah, so generally what's going to happen is um, once the once some PTM students become certified, let's say USPT and PTR, uh, that's pretty much going to be near the end of their time with PTM. So they'll probably pay for that. Um, and then as they leave Hope College and now they're teaching pro or wherever in Atlanta or whatever, um, they can choose if they're going to continue to have their, because every month, every year you can basically join or not join or mm-hmm. rejoin, I should say, the PTR and the USPTA. Now, I think they're going to, both associations are doing a lot in doing much more coaches uh, education, which is kind of like what the USA wanted in the first place. So I think there'll be, I obviously am a member of both and I have all my full-time employees be a member of both. So kind of talking to the choir, I think it's great to be certified, even though legally you don't have to be. Remember, this is all, you know, kind of the big picture. Now it is becoming more and more difficult to get a job as a teaching professional at a club if you're not certified but I can't look you in the eye or any parent in the eye and say that it's 100% necessary. But I can look a parent in the eye and say it'll be 100% more likely that you'll get a job if you're certified than if you're not. Mm -hmm. But we still have that little weird twist that in our country, you know, you can be, you know, this is kind of a sad situation, but up until now, the certification, you've had fewer hours to be, um, become a teacher of a coach of potentially students fewer hours necessary to get certified than it is, does to take uh, to cut the hair of a dog to be a dog groomer in Michigan but just give you some perspective how easy it's been the, the bar has been too low honestly the entrance bar to get yeah there. well and you know another piece of that is what happens once you do get certified, is there a continuing education requirement? What does that look like? And, you yeah. know, so to me, it seems like as a parent, if I'm looking at two coaches, one who has the PTM background and one who doesn't, even though they both may be certified through the two coaching organizations, I'm going to go with the person who's gone through the PTM program because. At least I know they ha- they're guaranteed a certain level and depth of knowledge, which I don't think you get that guarantee through the two certifying organizations. It's still pretty easy to get certified. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, I think that's a fair assessment. And to be fair to coaches who haven't done PTM, a lot of it will be experience. You know, like uh, if someone looks at a PTM student who's actually – two years into his degree, he's 24, uh, you know, two years into his career, I should say, and he's 24, he's a PTM student, but he's got a couple years of coaching, actual out in the, in the world coaching. And then you got a 55-year-old coach who's been doing it for 35 years. You know, I'm not going to say every PTM student is going to be better than that guy with all that experience, but for sure, when you're looking kind of apples to apples, a, a younger pro who's gone through the PTM versus one who hasn't, um, these PTM programs are no joke. I mean, these are college degrees. You're going to have to know your stuff. You're going to get all kinds of hands-on experience. I wish, honestly, it was around, but it made my life easier when I was a young guy. If I could have had some <laughs> of that training going into the real world instead of just kind of seeing what what happens when I when I hit. So, Except thing- you're one of those guys that has sought out mentors, right? I mean, that's that's one of the things you and I have talked about before is – 
the importance of connecting with people who know more than you and learning from them. And you are that personality. You seek those people out and, and you now serve as a mentor for the people coming up behind you. Yeah. So I've always been one that loves coaching education. Um, and, you know, you asked a little bit ago about what what's the continuing education going to be. Well, uh, it's a little uncertain, but I know it's going to be something. It's already gone from not mandatory, both the USPTA and the PTR. You know, like five years ago, you didn't have to have anything. And honestly, they were afraid. Each organization was a little afraid to require it because you might tick off some people and they say, okay, PTR, if you're going to require it, then I'm just going to go to USPTA or vice versa. But now they both got together at least on this five years ago and they decided we're going to demand that there's, and this is how much, this is a little sad, but six hours of education in three years, which is woefully low in my opinion, but at least it's something. And I'm hoping, and I know that's still in, in play. So that's the next three year period is up next year. And, and you know, so there'll be more people doing it, but I'm hoping personally that that'll be something that as we move forward with both organizations are kind of with a, with a little bit of encouragement from USCA are taking that number up and up and up. Um, well, I, I would think, that, I, I mean, I used to be a fitness professional and I had to have yeah. 20 hours every two years to keep my certification yeah. as a fitness, you know, like a, I taught aerobics classes. So yeah. Um, yeah, six hours in three years. Um, is disappointing to hear. And I would yeah. hope that USTA, in order to grant this accreditation that hopefully is going to add some credence to these coaching organizations and the certification so that when a parent sees that USPTA or PTR behind a coach's name, it's going to mean something. I, I would think right. USTA has got to up that. Yeah. And I think, I think that, the reason that they're at least having anything now compared to nothing in the past is because of that pressure from the USDA. And um, this is all very fluid. You know, this is this is the year because everything new. kind of kicks in yeah. next year in 2019. But uh, things are moving real quickly. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, for me, I understand one of the, the arguments about people that can't or say they can't go to conventions is, listen, I'm a pro at teaching the core. I can't get away. Because my boss is a big guy. He's the one that goes away. Uh, and I can't afford it. Plus, it costs money. Plus, I lose hours teaching. Um, but I'm pretty certain that's the same in every industry. You know, you don't yes. generally, you know, so doctors have to give up time. And, rumors and there are online the opportunities people. now. I mean, you right. know, the Internet's a wonderful tool. So, yeah. um, and that's that's a big change. That's growing more and more. So both the PTR, the USPTA, and the USCA. And honestly, myself, because I, I was contracted by the USCA to help them build three courses for PTM students and apprentices. The, uh, the amount of online stuff is really going to be cranking out big time here in the next uh, couple of years. Even on my own website, tennisreels.tv, I now have courses where people can get educational credit because um, it is tough, you know. But when you can sit in your own computer and, and watch a Master Pro show you how to teach a private lesson effectively, you know, that's that's helpful. Absolutely. Well, let's dig into the meat of the PTM program and maybe you can walk us through what the curriculum is going to look like, what the course names sure. are and what they include and how many hours you have to get and all of that. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about hope, but basically um, I, I had a little list here that I covered with our parents meeting. Uh, so a lot of what they're going to learn here is on court coaching. Now, I think the method that we're going to deliver this training is going to be a mixture of actual courses where they come and attend, you know, an evening class with me at the tennis center. Uh, there could be some online pro, uh, courses or it could be, you know, like internship time here inside the tennis center. So that piece is going to be fluid. But I can tell you, on-court coaching is huge because if you're a teaching pro, this is what you do for a living. You generally don't get paid unless you're out there teaching. So your ability to run a group lesson and do effective private lessons and run teams is paramount. So that's going to be a huge part that we're going to focus on. Uh, racket stringing and repair is going to be uh, a course, if you will. I'm probably going to um, just adopt 
the course that they already have with the USTA and, the, and URSA, which filmed it last year, because that's a great way for player or tennis coaches to make money because we have weird hours and there's pockets of the day where you're not really busy because, you know, everybody's at work. So our kids will get certified as URSA stringers. Um, they're also going to uh, learn um, tournament administration. Uh, I want all the kids here to become a certified umpire. I want them to be familiar with the TDM, the USDA's program for running tournaments, um, all that. I want them to be able to run, and they will because we run tournaments and they'll have they'll get their hands wet, <laughs> their feet wet and their hands dirty doing the actual tournament administration. Uh, we're going to do a lot about coaching, um, not only like team coaching, I mean. So that would be coaching a, a, a USDA team at your club all the way to coaching a middle school team, to a high school team, to a college team. And how do you make lineups and how do you conduct practices and how do you set up seasons and checklists before seasons and postseason and parents and meetings and all that stuff will be an area that we hit hard. Um, I have a course. It's actually one of the courses I did with the USTA that I did it. And uh, for sure, I'm going to have our kids go through it. It's, it's online, but I'm also going to take my course. And it's called Feeding Skills. So your ability to feed... Um, is different than your ability to play. And there's a lot of times that people think, well, if a person's a really good player, they'll for sure be a good feeder. And that's not not an assumption we can make. Um, there's some, a lot of examples where it's um, quite the opposite. So um, we're going to have front desk operations. They're going to be a, a unit on that. So they're going to actually work and sit at my front desk, learn how to take reservations, learn how to switch people from class to class, all the stuff that really happens on the real world. Uh, we're going to have a uh, court maintenance unit. Um, we don't have clay courts here at Hope College, but you know, probably 10 miles away, there's uh, right on Lake Michigan. There's eight clay courts that are beautiful. I've already partnered with them, and we'll, every spring we'll be bringing our people over to learn how to do it and run some, you know, free labor to put it all out there. Uh, they're going to do a course on how to do world class private lessons. How you take a young player from age 10 and make sure that you're hitting all the right things from the proper division, you know, what you what you need to accomplish in the 12s and the 14s and the 16s and the 18s so that you can make a really high-performance player, if that's what that player wants. Uh, there's another course called Launching Your Career. It's another one that I did with the USTA. Um, and that one is just really good for people that are starting on the industry. It tells them all kinds of stuff. The first half of that course is based from a big USTA survey that they spent a good amount of money on surveying people that actually hire tennis coaches and saying, what do you guys want? So you can hear right from all these people who hire exactly what we want. We turn that into a course. Um, and then there's going to be uh, on-court group drills, and that's another course I did for the USA, so that'll be one. Um, and then on top of these actual courses, there's going to be, I'm not sure what we're even going to call it yet, if it's going to be work-study or internship or whatever, but um, throughout the year, so if someone comes to Hope College and they're with me for eight semesters, each of those semesters, they're going to spend a certain amount of hours here at the tennis center doing everything. It's going to be like a rotation. So I want them to get actual, you know, practical experience and not just theory. So um, mm -hmm. that's going to be a big part because I think it'd be a shame for us to waste that, the fact that we have such a literally a perfect learning lab because we're already doing it. And then that's kind of during the school year. Okay. And then we have uh, internships. Part, part of every PTM program is that you get paid summer internships. So <laughs> I already told you about all the emails that people are asking me. <laughs> it's your seven right. there now that people are calling and saying, hey, do you have any interns for the summer? You know, we know you're a good coach and we like the way you you know speak and you're probably going to train them up right. And I'm like, I'd love to send you somebody, but give us a couple of years. Right. So the plan at Hope College is that we have our own summer tennis academy here, and it's pretty, it's a pretty sweet program. It runs for ten weeks in the summer. We get about seventy kids every week. It's, we run it on this twelve outdoor court stadium right next to our club. It's really a cool experience. So the plan is that for everybody after their freshman year, now they have a summer, and their first summer is going to be spent with us. So I'll have a whole school year to look at them and get them going, and a whole. Uh, summer where they're working with me full time on the court. Um, and then the next school year, sophomore year, I have all that time before any Hope kids go out into the world. Uh, and then the idea is after their sophomore year, I wanted to have a different internship, even though 
I know a lot of them are going to say, oh, I'd like to just stay here at Hope because I live here in town. It's great. And, you know, it's fun. I'm, and I don't want that. I want them to go out and experience different types of work environments, like a country club or a municipality or a big indoor club or a resort. So the idea is you use those internships to kind of narrow down what you love and what you hate. So some students will love the resort setting, and others will say, no, I really like like a big indoor club. That was what I loved. And another student might say, no, man, I wanted, I think country clubs are the best, really nice facilities, you know, like a free lunch. So I want them to know and not just stay in their comfort zone. So that's the plan for paid summer internships. Very cool. So I, all those courses that you listed, um, you know, given that Parenting Aces is kind of geared toward the junior and college tennis parent, um, I didn't hear anything about, like, learning the junior competitive structure or understanding oh, yeah. ratings and rankings and um, progressions. And, and I know you and I talked about before we went on air um, about the nutrition piece and the fitness piece. So yeah. I, I want to give you an opportunity to expand a little on that. Yeah. So I hope um, we're the only one at the moment that has the actual major, the, the big major is in the sports sciences. So they're going to get all the nutrition and motor learning and biomechanical and anatomy and you know, repair, injury, all that stuff's going to happen in their actual whole college classes. Um, now, the USDA has a lot of those courses. You know, Mark Kovacs, I'm sure he's actually coming yeah. to my club in two days. We're going to film some stuff. And um, He's an Atlanta know, boy. Through. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so he's uh, he's coming up, and he's already got a lot of good courses. So I hope we won't need too much of that because we're going to cover it in the actual degree. But one real important thing is, the whole USTA tournament structure and stuff. And I'm probably going to teach most of that kind of content in the, in the module we do for private lessons. So um, a lot of coaches teaching professionals doing it full time still, especially if they don't have high performance players or maybe they don't have an interest in that. Um, they don't know the structure. They don't know what, you know, what, are, what's a designated, what's, what, what do you mean a close? Why did, you know, there's just so many questions. I have a development in-house it's an actual course in house for my parents that um, they can take. And I just take them on the USTA website and I show them how to sign up for a tournament. And literally on that page, it's just me on the screen talking them through it. And I tell them, okay, there's, I counted over 100 possible links to click. And the one that they have to click is super not noticeable. It's way down here at the bottom. Right. So if you're a new parent or a new coach, it's like, how do you even educate your your clients about this. So we're going to be doing a lot of that. Let me interrupt one second, Jorge. And I want to just let the listeners know, I actually have that course on the parenting aces YouTube channel. Um, Cause you put that out a couple years ago and yeah. it's phenomenal content. And so I want to urge everybody, especially if you're new to the competitive tennis scene, please check out Jorge's course on how to navigate and sign your child up for a tournament. It's, it's crucial that you have this information. <laughs> yeah. And that's really basic. But then, you know, then you got your next level up where now the player is not a beginner, but he needs more help. Like uh, I need to know about what's a designated tournament. Why is it level three here? But when I go to Atlanta, they have seven levels and in the Midwest, they have four levels and uh, Florida, they have nine levels and why, are, what's the level? And, uh, what's a point, you know, rankings for points versus UTR. Um, there's just so much out there that, right. uh, you know, just basic education for the, pet, the tennis family is pretty bad at most clubs. And uh, it's because the coaches you know, don't your whole know. Life, yeah. 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 Your life is all about that, right? Just shows. I need help. Someone tell me what to do. And there just isn't a lot of places to go find it. Right. So you will be incorporating that type of information in the coursework for the PTM oh, program. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That that right there is a reason to look for a PTM coach. I mean, you know, to yeah. get a coach from the get go that has that knowledge is golden. Right. Yeah, you can you can waste a lot of time and money uh, by being misguided or not guided at all. Right. And. Uh, it happens all the time. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So this program is going to start in fall of 2018. How many students will you accept into the program? Do you know? Sure. So here at home, we're a little, we're a small division three school. We have a total of 3,000 students. So I would love to have three to five students coming in every uh, semester, or I'm sorry, every fall. So right now I have three and a half uh, coming for this this first year. What's uh, a half which I'm happy student? with because we. <laughs> What's um, a half? A person, <laughs> yeah, the half is they're coming to Hope, but they're not positive they're going to do PTM yet. So got I'm working it. on them. So I got them. <laughs> I got them to come to Hope. Well, I got that, and they're I'm I'm working them to do PTM. I think this is a female player. Uh, that would, has a really great personality. She would kill as a, a young female tennis coach. I, I just know she would. So um, that's what that's, she's my half. <laughs> and then uh, we have another person transferring in. We have one that's already on our women's team. Actually, our number one player from our women's team is a PTM a student. We'll, we'll transfer into that program next year. She's already here on campus. Um, so yeah, it's I'm excited about it. So um, I suspect that probably. You know, I really don't envision us having 50 to 100 people. I'm not even sure the college wants that. Uh, but if we, once we have our four-year cycle and we get everybody in here, now we're just turning turning over. I would love it if, if it was between 20 and 30 kids. That'd be amazing. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, I don't think um, we're ever going to be 100 kids. I think some colleges want that and they have this room and space for it. Uh, and honestly, I'm not sure we we have we could even do that. I, I'm sure if, we, if all of a sudden we have 100 PT hammers, we'll find something to do. But we're going to have to clear out some space and hire a lot more people to do it really well. So if if somebody listening is interested in applying to a PTM program or finding a PTM program to apply to, where do they go to get that information? Sure. There's really uh, so I'll I'll give you. If they're interested in the Hope, it's just if you just Google Hope College PTM program, the website itself is hope.edu backslash PTM. But uh, that's just going to give you Hope information. But the other uh, thing you want to search is careers. I'm going to actually do it so I careers beyond the court. Uh, I'm just going to make sure. I give it, yeah, careersbeyondthecourt.com. I'm going to make sure I check that link. So, um, I'm going to keep searching for it. But there's a website that the USC has. It's kind of a clearinghouse. And uh, it has all the PTM programs, all the, you know, schools, the links of the schools, uh, where they're located, uh, the PTM websites. It's, it's really helpful. I'm going to make sure I give up proper things. So I apologize for that. No, no problem. And and we'll have the link in the show notes as well for the listeners. You can check that out. So let's say somebody wants to come do PTM at Hope College. They, I'm assuming they go through the regular application channels. They apply to Hope College. They get accepted. And then is it a separate application for PTM or how does that work? No, actually right on the Hope College PTM webpage, uh, there's a spot where you can start putting uh, your information. So on that, on the Hope PTM webpage, you'll see some videos. Um, there's actually a video, three videos about Hope and why it's going to be interesting here at Hope in particular. Um, and then there's a bigger video for, uh, that's, I think, more like 20 minutes long with James Blake talking about, um, you know, the, the kind of the 30,000-foot view. Uh, of, what, of all the different things you can do in tennis, and that's a really good one. Uh, and then right on that webpage, you can enter. And then once you get in the system at Hope, then you'll start getting emails from me. you start getting emails from admissions. You know, one of the things that I'm, and this is good and bad, I guess, but one of the things that um, there's three students right now in my junior program, in my current junior program here at the club, that were interested uh, in doing PTM, uh, but they didn't get accepted to Hope. Um, so and that's bad. But the good news is they're going to a different PTM program, so that's good. But obviously I would have rather have them at Hope. But the two of them, one frankly couldn't afford it, um, and one 
or the other two didn't get accepted because their grades weren't good enough. They had good grades, but Hope is kind of academically challenging. So it's, it's tough, kind of a tough admittance thing. So I'm committed. Obviously, I want people coming to, to Hope. I think we're going to have something special, but I've already proven that if they can't get into Hope, I'm willing to help them go to other other places. So we're partnering with our friends at Ferris, which is only an hour away. Um, the guy up there, Derek Amillo, and um, he's now got a helper. Mark Dorn, who's a friend of mine, and you know we're all kind of collaborating, but we we got to get more coaches trained up and available. Right, right. So, if people want to get more information on the program, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Um, I'll probably give. They can do it a couple of ways. If they go to um, hope.edu backslash ptm, they can connect with me right there. My email's there, but I'll give it to you as well. It's just my name, Capistani at hope.edu. Capistani is spelled C-A-P-E-S-T-A-N-Y and at hope, H-O-P-E dot E-D-U. And um, yeah, I'd be grateful. Obviously, we're part of the reason I'm doing this show is to educate people, but we're so new, we literally haven't quite even started that for me, it's just getting the word out. I've been traveling a lot and speaking a lot and just you know, there's a lot of interest. Um, I think a lot of people still honestly look at it like, well, you, ten- you can teach tennis? What? You know, it's kind of a weird job in that regard. A lot of families don't even recognize it as a career, but it can be an amazing career. <laughs> and um, we definitely need more good young talent in the, in the coaching world. And if we can train them up so they can get a quick start and help their students, that's even better. Who's your ideal PTM candidate? For me, it's not necessarily the level of play. I want someone who is passionate about tennis, just loves tennis, the kind of high schooler that plays and maybe takes group lessons and reads about tennis and watches tennis on TV. They just got to be a tennis nut. And secondarily, or probably even primarily, uh, I found that the right personality is huge. And Anybody can succeed with any personality as a tennis coach, but for me, without a doubt, the most successful tennis coaches are personable. They're outgoing. Um, I wouldn't say they're giant personalities, but they're very approachable, and they're the kind of person when they walk in a room, they see somebody and they smile, and they want to go and talk to them. That's their default settings. Uh, the coaches who I've had that have struggled the most are super, super introverts. Uh, because, and this doesn't mean they can, I've had a couple introverts that were amazing coaches and had nice careers, but the fact is that most clients are going to look at a super introverted person as someone that doesn't know or that doesn't care. And it's maybe not fair, but for sure, and I've done this, I'm going, I'm getting close to 40 years now on the court and teaching and managing coaches. Um, if I think of the top 20 coaches that I've come across in my life that I've worked with, probably 19 of them have a really outgoing personality. Uh, so that's something I would look for. Uh, I wouldn't dis, um, I wouldn't discourage an introvert from doing it, but I would make sure the introvert knows, listen, this is your default settings, but you're also going to, I'm going to teach you when you're here. I'm going to teach you how to be more gregarious. I'm going to teach you how to work the lobby, walk through the lobby and high five people and meet people and, you know, this is things that they they need to know how to do. That's super important to me, even as when I hire, because I still hire pros. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I look for. Well, I those are great tips and kind of great insights, I think, for people thinking about moving into this industry after college. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast, Jorge, is because not everybody is looking to make a living playing tennis, but there are a lot of people that, like you said, are passionate about the game, passionate about the sport, and want to stay involved in some way, shape, or form after they graduate school, whether they're playing varsity tennis in college, whether they're playing club tennis in college, whether they're not playing tennis at all in college. You know, they're taking a break, but they still love the game, love the sport, and want to figure out a way to make a living being on the court and interacting with other players. So I, you know, one of the goals here is to help parents understand the opportunities that tennis provides. And this 
professional tennis management program is just one more way that junior tennis can lead into a long-term career path. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, we've been talking mostly assuming that the person that comes out of PTM is going to be teaching tennis as a, a club teaching pro. And that's definitely what a lot of them do, but that's not the only thing they do, right? A lot of them go to work for USTA. A lot of them go to work for manufacturers for different federations. So, uh, I know a lot of tennis coaches that started out and, you know, they taught maybe 20 years on the court and then they transition. And that's always a huge thing. I'm I'm going to tell every one of my PTM students that my wish for you is that you put in at least five to 10 years on the court, get really good of every single day, meeting people, over delivering, getting, you know, dealing with the personalities and get real good at that. Because if you can get those people skills, which that will develop, then the world is yours. One of my best friends, um, you know, his clubs closed down in Grand Rapids um, and he just couldn't get a a decent tennis job that paid him anything close to what he used to have. So he went into financial planning and he was so loved by those members that he was like unbelievably successful as a financial planner because of the, the contacts that he brought from tennis. And there's just something about I'm not on the court as much as I used to be, but when you're on the court and you're helping students and you're helping kids, those parents of those kids and those kids, man, they adore you and you have allies for life that even to this day, I have students, you know, that I coached to a real high level back in the day that they would, them and their family would just do anything for me. And it's an amazing, you know, career to have in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. And I, again, I mean, this is just one more gift that tennis bestows on us and, you know, how cool that the universities now are picking up on this and, and developing a professional pathway for people looking to continue in the tennis arena. And I I just think it's fantastic. And I, I look forward to speaking with you in a year, Jorge, and hearing that yeah, you're having to turn it. students away and you know, <laughs> <laughs> you've got more kids than you can handle. And maybe there are 10 more PTM programs starting around the country in fall 2019. Yeah, they're coming on board. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be fantastic. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. I think yeah. at the end of the day, uh, these these coaches, you know, when you're young and you start out with coaching, probably what your, your biggest passion is, I'm going to help people be better at tennis. but most coaches that stick around and do it well, um, and we're going to be teaching this as part of what you know we teach here at the Hope PTM program, is uh, that's important. Tennis is important, but repurposing tennis to help people grow up and repurposing tennis to help them become better people, that's when coaching is now your, now your life as a coach has purpose, and that's so much more fun and so much more deep and meaningful than getting another trophy on a weekend. So, um that's huge. I think of all the people who I've had in my life who I've been able to coach and, you know, just the struggles they've gone through. But tennis, as you know, unbelievably fun and unbelievably frustrating. Got to be one of the most frustrating sports. Um, <laughs> just the fact that you're a, yes. your umpire is the freaking guy you're trying to be. Right. I mean, it's right for, you know, I have this corny thing that I always say, but I think tennis players just overlook this and tennis parents overlook this. But we'll have 10 year olds playing in tournaments, 11 year old, and we're letting them be the umpire for themselves. They're calling and we're expecting it to be fair. So, and people just think, well, that's the way tennis is no big deal. But imagine any other youth sport doing that. Imagine the baseball, the little league tennis. Imagine that they say, okay, you kids have to grow up. So we're going to let you call ball. If you're the batter, you're going to call balls and strikes. All right. Now be fair and go out there. And the kid in the batter's box just starts calling ball, 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 and he walks to first base. It would literally be a riot in the stands. Right, right. Um, you can't give kids that responsibility. But you, you, here in tennis, we do. I think it's cool that we do. But um, it's just so it's a, such a unique and cool sport. Um, but there's a lot to it. So our main mission at the end of the day is we want to turn out coaches that can repurpose tennis uh, to help people grow up and be better people. And if they develop great tennis players along the way, that's even better. But that that's the biggest picture. Well, I love that. And I wish you all the success. I know it's going to come because you're an amazing coach yourself and an amazing teacher. And uh, so the kids that get to 
learn under your guidance are, are going to have the best training possible. And, and I'm just really looking forward to hearing your success stories starting next year. Sure. Yeah. And I'll share some, I'll share some links with you and I even send that PowerPoint as a PDF. If you want to put it where people can access it, yeah. I'm totally fine with that. Cool. Well, we'll have all kinds of stuff in the show notes this week. So listeners, be sure to check those out on parentingaces.com and you'll find links to everything we've talked about today and uh, including Jorge's email address. So if you have more questions for him, you can reach out directly. Jorge Capistani, thank you so much for doing the podcast this week. And I'm, I just cannot wait to see what comes at Hope College. Thank you so much for your time and appreciate you uh, letting me get up in front of your audience. Thanks again. Thank you. And to my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time on Parenting Aces. I'm Lisa Stone, and you've been listening to the Parenting Aces podcast. For tennis parents, by a tennis parent. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to us and write a review on iTunes. For more information on navigating the junior and college tennis journey, please visit us online at parentingaces.com. Thanks for tuning in and sharing us with your tennis community.